record. Glory be to God. Lord, we just honor you and we thank you for this moment that we have to spend with you, Lord, um, to connect with you in this way, to fellowship with one another. Um, and Lord, I just really ask and pray that you may just have your way in our hearts, you will have your way in our minds, um, that Lord, you will just really just open us up to your will and your desire for our lives, Lord. And as we have been through this teaching of discipleship 101, Lord, I just really pray, God, that, you know, this will continue to empower us um, to walk in a way that honors you and um, that glorifies you um, and, and reveals who you are in the earth. So, Lord, just continue to have your way. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen, amen. So um, we are on our last session, last, last of um, our midweek um, season one. And, you know, it's been really, really good for us to kind of go through and explore, you know, essentially discipleship 101 and kind of break that, break that down and really explore it as well. And so um, to, I'm going to go through a brief recap. Um, I'm a fan of recaps because I believe like, you know, we don't just learn when we hear something once. It's repetition is key. Repetition is key. Repetition is key. And so I'm going to go through um, some of um, the things that we have been discussing, exploring, and really delving into over the last few weeks. And so um, let me know in the chat as well, as I'm going through it, um, a heart, like a red heart for it stepped on your toes, like it was deep and a green heart, like, yeah, like that blessed me. Yeah if you can anyway, if you can put an emoji or put praying hands, if it blessed you and red heart that like, yo, this, it really cut deep. It really went into me. Amen. Everyone with me. Yeah. Interaction in the chat. Okay. Awesome. So um, week one, we, we essentially spoke about understanding discipleship, some of the basics around discipleship. Um, once again, disciple, the Greek word meaning student or pupil, a follower of another, um, and it carrying the connotations of discipline, training according to rule or drill, commitment, um, being dedication and obligation to a given cause, subject matter or person, hardness, toughness, severity, and unpleasantness to the senses so discipleship is not necessarily something that is easy there are hard moments there are tough there is toughness connected to it severity connected to it obedience um a disciple being submissive to another's will submission the surrendering of oneself to the control of another to seize resistance and to yield and so um you know, upon us exploring this, it was about that term disciple being commonly used um, and it in, in Jesus's day and it involving theory, practice and discussion. So remember, I gave the example about, you know, um, Jews and, you know, when they you became a disciple of a rabbi, you know, you would follow his whole life, you would be with him 24 seven, like in order for um, the individual to absorb and to take on um, those teachings and that way of living, right? And so every Christian is called to be a disciple. It's not optional. Um, it's, it's not optional. It's not something that on a good day or on a bad day, we choose whether we want to be a disciple no like the calling is consistent from the lord and god wants his children to be disciples of his son jesus christ yeah um so give me a heart give me a greet you y'all know the hand sign is for it but it's a blessing to know and the heart sign is like yo like it challenged me right so what does a disciple do what does that look like um day to day um 
it's a disciple living continually in the word, a disciple committing his life completely to the master, a disciple lives in a fruit bearing relationship with Jesus, a disciple is committed to unconditional sacrificial love for others. And remember in the session, we spoke about the heart of a disciple is servanthood. And Jesus was the example of that, especially when he washed the disciples' feet. He said, like, I'm doing this as an example for how you should be. A disciple, five, a disciple is dedicated to the fulfillment of Christ's commission. So we have been commissioned to make disciples. That is not reliant on me and PA. We're not the only ones, um, a, a special type of people that are called um to make disciples no you are called like you are called it's there it's our commission as followers of Jesus Christ to make disciples and carry his gospel so we delved into that and number six lastly a disciple walks in step with the Holy Spirit in order for us to bear fruit it is being in the word but it's also um, the evidence, the bearing of our fruit is the evidence of the Holy Spirit working in us, the Holy Spirit convicting us to apply the word of God, the Holy Spirit um, leading us into truth so that we can reveal who he is in the earth. Amen. So um, that was week one in terms of discipleship. Right. Thank you, Shola. Thank you. Red Heart. I, I love it. It challenged you. OK, um, week two, we looked at new creation realities and we explored who is the new creation. And although there was much more um, around the new creation, um, really, in essence, it's those who are now born again. That's you and I, um, by the work of the spirit of God, we gave our life to Christ, you know, and we put our faith in Christ. He his works, his death, burial, and resurrection. We've put our faith, we've, we've confessed him as a Lord. And so we are now born again, which is a spiritual work. Um, and those redeemed and bought by the blood of Christ Jesus from the kingdom of darkness, as Colossians speaks about that, we have been redeemed from the kingdom of darkness and been transferred into his marvelous life, right? And so that is the new creation. And so um we looked at three things that we are imputed with as a result of being born again and that was righteousness we are approved of God we have right standing with God and this righteousness being um I use the term being righteousness conscious enables us to stand as the master of sin to walk and live freely and fearlessly right so there aren't good when when you are in right standing with God there aren't good days and bad days or days that are the best days for us to to, um connect with him to fellowship with him no like that doesn't exist there's no limits or boundaries in terms of uh, us having a friendship with God in that way or developing one um we are made right because of what Christ did right he is our intercessor and we are also imputed with peace that is access hey, how you doing, man? Oh, hey. I'm okay man okay hey. good Baby, you're you're on, you're on yeah, man, I can talk as far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. How are you? I know, man, literally. I can't, I can't remember how long that <laughs> Okay, so where was I? Um, peace being access to God. So we have that swift. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, yo, like, yo. <laughs> anyway, it's all right, guys. We back, we back. Um, so peace being access, we have access to God, we have a peace within ourselves that we can access him as well, right, because of our um, righteousness, consciousness, right, um, joy in the Holy Spirit, something that the Holy Spirit imparts into us is cheerfulness, it's delight, that word joy that was used in that scripture in Romans is to do with cheerfulness and delight, right, so um, those are the things that we are imputed with, the key things we're imputed with um, as um, born again believers. Amen. Everyone with me? Everyone all good? So last week we looked at the father heart of God um, and we explored that the new birth, this 
um, us being born again enables us to possess the nature of God, which is love. So God is love, right? Is who he is, right? There's no variation in him. He is love. He is the, he epitomizes love in its fullness, right? And so now we have this new birth. Now we have been born again by his spirit. It enables us to then possess that. And so we explored first John 4, 7 to 9 and John 13, 13 to 35 right where it speaks about you know God being love and how we are to express this love to one another in different ways right and we are commanded to love like this this um this mandate or this call to love um is not optional it's not you know oh maybe no 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 like this is a command for us to love right um but then i said we cannot express what we ourselves have not and do not experience it says that we love him because he first loved us and so um what our response in love to god is basically as a result of his love to us. And so our ability to even extend that love, to extend mercy, to extend grace is, is hinged upon our revelation of his love, his mercy, and his grace, right? So if um, there's a scripture in the gospels where it speaks about, um, you know, freely um, about being um, forgiven much, right? Being forgiven much. And so like, if you know that you are forgiven much, you will forgive freely as well. If you know that it's been the mercy of God that has carried you up until this point, then you would express that, right? But it all begins from that place of the revelation of his deep love as a father towards you. And so um, the new birth allows us, right, to experience that in its in its fullness, Um and experiencing it in the true context of his fatherhood right so we're experiencing that in the context of his fatherhood not um the generic oh god loves me you know like he loves everybody no 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 it's us recognizing and understanding that he the same intense love that he had for the son is the same intense love that he has for us right and so it's about us as disciples stepping into this realm where we are experiencing his love experiencing in his fatherhood really receiving it for what it is in its purity not in what our experiences were with our fathers our biological fathers or our stepfathers or people that were father figures in our lives it's about us now allowing ourselves to transition to release that the disappointment that came from those experiences and transition into a place where we we release that and we step into a place where we are in full reception right of receiving his love everyone everyone checking yeah and so last week one of my favorite subjects to speak on I shared my own experience um, and my own examples um, with the hopes that you all um, would be inspired to really dig deeper and to really pull closer to him as father, not just as, oh, that is God and he is holy, right? God is fully holy. Yes, he is. And he's fully a father as well, right? And so three key things that we explored within that is number one, um, Jesus revealed the father right? So this was through his own life and also his relationship with the father. How he engaged with the father is how we are called to engage and fellowship with the father. And so I gave the example from John chapter five, um, where we were speaking about how his confession was like, the father loves the son. And I challenged you all to say, yo, like, um, like, do you have that confession? Do you have that convi conviction? Are you deeply pers persuaded of that truth that the father loves Bim, the father loves Damola, the father loves Essay deeply, um, the father loves Dami? Like, is there a, is that deeply, um, is there a deep persuasion? And if there is a deep persuasion, it means that you can fully trust him, you know, like, 
you cannot trust who you're not convinced loves you. You know, um, I gave the example of Josias, right? Um, and we spoke about our doctor in the house, Dr. Ariel, even, even gave her, sprinkled her knowledge on it as well. And we spoke about how, you know, when Josias was going through his phase of se separation anxiety, and he would think like, yo, I'm anxious, like, what's happening? Why are you guys not here? The more he grew older, he became more aware that mommy and daddy go away. And um, but he also needed to understand after some time when I loved on him and reassured him through our intimacy, then he, you know, now he's 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 neither here or there, whether we're in the room or not. But that was through our intimacy. That intimacy would served as reassurance for him to trust that mom and dad are always going to come back. And that is just a reflection of how we should be, you know, with the father, like, yo, there is my, through my intimacy, I have this full persuasion now that, you know, my father won't abandon me. My father knows the plans that he has for me. I don't need to be anxious. I don't need to be, you know, losing sleep. I don't need to now go into my, um, my coping mechanism of trying to control everything or trying to, you know, know um fear um uh project fear onto other people of staying with me as a way for me to feel secure no like I can trust because he is for me and that comes with intimacy with his word and in the place of prayer so Jesus revealed many facets of God's name and personality pointing to God's fatherhood. Um, number two, we discussed the spirit reveals the father and affirms us as children, right? So we discussed how Jesus lived in this constant affirmation of the father before he even began his ministry. We see that in um, Matthew chapter three, you know, it, when Jesus was being baptized, he said, look, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then he went into the wilderness. Then when he went after he came out the wilderness, he began his ministry. And I spoke about how that affirmation before he did anything, he was already loved and affirmed. And I spoke about us that breaking the, the will to always do works as a way to be accepted or a way to belong to God. Like we already are, Jesus already was. And we see this in this father son relationship. He already was, you know, and that is, I believe that that affirmation, that confirmation, that love is what carried him in a season of his wilderness period and what carried him in his ministry. Amen. And so it highlights how we are to live. And lastly, Jesus demonstrated true submission as a son to the father during his earthly life and passion. And so we, I, I spoke about how Jesus was an example of true submission and how submission um, and how the lack of submission is a love issue. It's not, oh, I don't feel comfortable. I don't, you know, it says like, if you love me, you will obey my commands. So it's not about comfortability or whether something feels good to you. It's out of love, you know? Um, and when I look at it in the, in the paradigm of marriage, you know, it's not about whether I, you know, one time Ayo took me to an Arsenal game. Okay. I don't like... <laughs> Arsenal like you know um big up big up big up you know but he took me to an Arsenal game it wasn't about whether I liked Arsenal or not it was about doing something that my husband also loves to do why because I love him and so I'm willing to bite the bullet and you know what it turned out to be quite all right as well you know and how and that is a reflection also of how God is you know um that sometimes it turns out all right right I said I enjoyed it I babe I confess that I did enjoy it um it turned out all right you know but I use that as an example to say like love motivates you in a way that the law cannot that fear cannot love motivates you when I'm I'm doing stuff in the context of marriage now like I I will I will make every effort to honor my husband out of love it's not even in the midst of when I feel a certain way no I can still honor I can still because it's love love is the motivator not law not fear not obligation amen 
And so that was our, yeah, thank you, Shola. That was the father heart of God. And, you know, I really encourage you, even last week's um, session, um, those of you that were here would say that it was a great session, right? Um, and really convicting. We really made some confessions as well. We really sat in, you know, even when the father spoke to me and said, Susan, even if you do nothing else, you are still loved. And the freedom that came out of that, you know, it broke, you know, the slave mentality, you know, it broke insubordination, like it broke rebellion in my life because there was this, there was this love that was was being pulled out by the father, you know, and this thing of like, you don't need to earn me, you know, you already are. Um, and so I really want to encourage you, um, if you have to watch it again, watch it again. But I really believe in this season, God desires um, you to really walk in this um, revelation of your sonship. Amen. And so um, just on that point of the spirit reveals the father and affirms us as children, the Holy Spirit, you know, in Romans eight speaks about the affirmation of, of Abba, right? That it's the spirit. Those that are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. And he's given us a spirit of adoption that cries out Abba father and affirms not only our, our um, sonship, but also our inheritance in him. Amen. We share the same rights as Jesus. So I'm going to pause there before I go into the little element, the small element um, of today's um, ending session of the season. Um, and I just want to hear everyone's thoughts, especially from last week's session. Like, how's everyone feeling? How did that sit with you? Um, yeah, go ahead. I'll go. Um... Um, I think, yeah, just I was even just uh, flicking back um, to my notes. And I think one of the biggest things that has even still stuck with me, and I think we might have prayed it like uh, in morning prayer, but is the Romans 8 scripture, um, <clears throat> which speaks about us like receiving, um, what does it say? Um, that we've now received the spirit of adoption or, or like something like that. And mm. I think for me, like honing on, to that being the heart of God, it's like, it just kind of like says everything about like who he is, um, like adoption being like something that we haven't deserved. So I think that for me has been like the biggest like um, takeaway. Um, and then just everything around like how love is just the only measure and stick. So I can do everything else, but if I haven't loved, it's just like, what's the point? Um, so those two things have been like the, the biggest like takeaways I think for me. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Thank you, Damola. Thank you. Anyone else? Thoughts in the room? Thoughts in the room? Might just have to start nominating people. Maybe I should nominate. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, no, Damola, that's a maybe good the idea. I like that. Go on. Go on. Very, very good idea. Someone. Don't hate me, by the way. Please. <laughs> don't hate me. Um, let, them, let them hate you, fam. <laughs> Go on, Damola. Go um, on. Cool. I'll go with uh Ora. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Davolo. I appreciate it. <laughs> I guess for me it was the point about how um well the, the second point actually about um God affirming us as his children and how like Jesus was affirmed before he did anything. Mm. And I think it's that encouragement that when we understand our sonship and who we are is like the affirmation of God of yeah the affirmation of God is what keeps us going mm -hmm. even during like difficult times and that thing of what you said about you know if we truly have received God's love we will submit and I think that that kind of was like the red heart for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was the red heart for me I guess it's like is a love issue but I think it made me reflect as well like do I truly um have I truly received um God's love for me as his child mm, mm. I love that I love that Ore. um what you said you know we don't need we it, it's so deep like if we really catch like this sonship thing it's it's 
actually really, really deep and it will revolutionize the way, the way you, the way you are in life, honestly, like it will revolutionize it. Tambo said, um, he's on, it's the affirming love of God. And you said, hold on one second. You don't need a stay to receive that affirmation, how he loves us. The older I get, the further away I move from performance-based relationship with Abba. Exactly, right? It's not about, and, and you can really see the maturity or the depth of that revelation based on the response that people have to life, right? Like your response in general to life reveals, you know, how deeply rooted you are as a disciple. Um, and it's, it's really interesting. Like, for example, like, you know, when, um, uh, like years, years, this is before I was even in a relationship, but when I would see other people, you know, um, in a relationship or, you know, and I'm just using that, it's plucking it out the sky. Okay, guys, um, other people in a relationship or, you know, just getting the things that maybe I would have desired, but it's not happening for me yet, or it feels like it was a delay. My response to that would be like, oh, like, you know, God, this, and you see, like, you forget about me. Like you can hear it in my language, how the, the, the immaturity, almost the, the lack of revelation of his heart towards me, right? If I didn't get a particular job or I'm being asked to do something, you can really hear, hear it. Whereas now if like we fast forward, like my, my response is like, God is truly good, you know, and he's a good father to me and he's very generous. And if he's not withholding, if he does not withhold good things to me, then that means whatever has not come my way is not good for me. That's my attitude because of that steadfast revelation, like that I have that conviction that I have, like, no, like God is good, right? And specifically he is good to me. And so what I'm saying is, is that sometimes, you know, your responses really do reveal um, just how deeply rooted you are, right? Um, and just where your maturity levels are. Like, I think we equate maturity to works. No, 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 no. The real highlight of your maturity is when you're in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> the real highlight is when you don't get what you want. The real highlight is when things ain't going ain't going your way, right? The real highlight is how you respond to people or how you respond in the midst of correction. That's the real highlight of your maturity, right? Like it's not your works, like what? And I know many people there and even, let me speak for myself. I know I've witnessed myself, okay? With a bad attitude behind closed doors, right? And, and being able to prophesy and do all of that bro it's not it's not yeah we're human but what I'm saying is that your your maturity is seen in your responses not in what you do and that's why it's important for us as disciples to be adamant in living a life aligned with him and following his pattern and allowing the Holy Spirit to really work in us right everyone with me yeah, yes, Tambo, whatever hasn't come my way isn't good for me. It's not because he doesn't withhold any good thing, right? And that's the attitude. But that's that's if you're yielded to the Lord, you can have that response, right? And so sometimes you have to just take inventory and, and look at your life and look at the cycles and the patterns and kind of see like, actually, what is this revealing about my maturity level, you know? But that's a different session altogether. That's almost like a live session. But all right, pick one more person and then we're going to move on. Okay. Um, Tamika. Ooh. Hey, Tamika. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I think everyone's kind of covered like the points I was going to say, but I think for me specifically, it was more of like really knowing and understanding that God loved us even before we knew ourselves and I feel like sometimes we feel maybe we're not worthy of his love but mm -hmm. the fact that he loved you before you were even created is just to remind yourself that regardless of what you've done or what you're going through that God's love never leaves you and to constantly remind yourself of that daily 
Mm, mm. Yeah. I love that. Thank you, Tamika. Yeah, like his love never changes. It, if it did change, then it goes against who he is. His love never changes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tamika. Very powerful. So we are um, go, going to end on another important note, which I think is really, really important for us. And I feel like this will become a little bit of a discussion, um, but we got PA here in the house and any other people that are in the house. But um, today I really want to talk about the disciple and community. Um, as I was praying, I feel like a lot of um, every topic, every um, topic we've touched on over the last few weeks has um, really, I feel like this is this is kind of like the glue that bands it all together as well in terms of our development, in terms of um, us being fruitful, right? Um, and so the disciple and community, and this is an emphasis on, um, on church, fellowship, um, gathering with other believers, um, I think is really, really important. So give me one second, I'm just setting my timer. So the first thing I do want to ask everyone in the room, and I'm going to start with, who is here? Who is, who is here? I'll start with Ariel. Sorry, Ariel. Um, <laughs> I'll start with Ariel. Why do we go to church? Why do we go to church? Like, what's, what's the point of us coming to church? Like on a Sunday, 10.30 a.m., doing a new saying. Like, why do we go to church? Um, good evening, everyone. First of all, um, <laughs> um, I would say we come to church to be discipled, um, to recognize, you know, um, to, well, for all of us to like come together as a body to spend time in the presence of God, um, to, you know, learn more about the word of God, although, you know, we're to do that by ourselves as well. However, um, I believe God desires for us to be in community whilst we worship him and, you know, learn more about him and um, to serve him as well. So, yeah, I would yeah. say that we come to church. <laughs> oh, I love that, Ariel. <laughs> um, pick someone else. Why do we go to church? Or you can just jump at me, but Ariel got 10 seconds and then I'll let Ariel choose. Why do we go to church? Like, what's the point? Like... Go on, Ariel. Choose someone. I'll choose Toyin. Ooh, Toyin. I already knew she was going to choose me. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I guess for me, I guess it's um, fellowship, mm -hmm. um, being rooted. I also think for accountability as well. I, to me, I see church as like a family, mm -hmm. um, and God sort of like it wasn't good for man to be alone. And I think on your walk, you need other people that are like-minded that are also um, being stewarded by a pastor in our, in our case, yourself and um, PA. Mm -hmm. And I think it just helps keep us focused um, and accountable while also doing it with mm. other, other people. Mm. Love that, love that. Thank you, Toyin. I'm gonna ask Toyin to ask a guy, one of the mandem, we need to hear from the mandems um why do we go to church like what's the point like um uh dami uh yeah um i think we go to church because <laughs> it is our father's house that's what i kind of uh, think of church as so mm -hmm. i think that's in my mind and that kind of speaks to the family element of what church should be mm -hmm. um, if it's a father's house and if we're all children of god then i guess everybody is essentially family so apart mm -hmm. from obviously the the more kind of um i guess the more kind of like accountability the more kind of teaching all that kind of stuff around it but i think primarily we go to church to meet with god and to be with others who are like us mm -hmm. um, so that's what i would say Mm, mm, okay <laughs> thank you thank you so could I add on yeah go on Aura. I think church is also a place where you you're trained like I think we're discipled mm -hmm. in church and kind of built up and prepared um 
yeah just to continue going out to do other things that god wants us to do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really really good thank you Ore. to be equipped to be trained love that i mean there's no right or wrong answer i just wanted to hear you know some where everyone's at you know um in terms of that um, because Tambo here is giving us full stockton and saying you go to church to find a wife. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, but time, well, that's what some people come to, to do at church. But, you know, we have to stick to the main thing. The main thing is the main thing. Um, Shola said, I agree with everyone to serve and love one another too. I love these. These are really, really great examples. Like I said, I think that it's really, really important you know, to really explore this because I feel as though sometimes we can undermine um, the the whole church thing. We can really undermine it. We can really not really see the purpose of it. Sometimes it can almost become optional, you know, but I really want to just touch on some truths and some things like scripturally as well um, as to why community, and I'm using the word, I'm interchanging between church and community um, because church um, is a community of believers coming together right and I'll get into that a little bit more but um, it's the gathering with other believers right and so one of the reasons why we go to church why we're committed to um, church is because Jesus Christ is committed to his church and we follow his example um, Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 it says husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her you know Jesus is committed to his church here it's showing a, a contrast between husband and wife but also using Jesus as an example to how he is with the church who are the church in this context in this in in this in this yeah in this context um it's the ecclesia ecclesia being that's the word that is used um ecclesia being called out ones those who God has called to himself to be his people for his purposes all those who have been redeemed the body of Christ essentially it's us the universal um church essentially so Jesus is committed to his bride the church right he's committed to us and so if we are following the example of you know Jesus then we are to follow his example we are to follow that example in regards to us being committed to church do you understand what I'm saying and so I really want to just draw upon um some key things especially from the early church right um because the early church being in the book of acts i really want to draw um some examples everyone if you're tracking just put track 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 in the chat if you're tracking right so jesus is committed to us he's com committed to his church right um and we are to follow that example and so um Second thing is that it is beneficial. This was um, this was spoken about. Um, someone highlighted highlighted it, but it's beneficial for our spiritual growth, right? Our spiritual growth um, um, is 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 tied to our community, right? Where we are planted, um, who we engage with. Now, like there's community outside of church. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's the be all and end all. So there are com there's community you can have, like friends that you can have, right? But us gathering as believers is beneficial for our spiritual growth. In Acts chapter 2 verses 42 it says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers that word fellowship in the greek word is i could say it all day today and now i can't say it guys my gosh kononia Kononia, right? Um, kononia, it's the Greek word for kononia, right? Um, which means, which is the same word that is used for the Holy Spirit um, in the New Testament. And it essentially means association, community, communion, joint partner, 
joint participation, intimacy, to share, collection. So they were in the apostles doctrine and fellowship they were in association with one another in community in communion in joint participation i'm in joint participation with toyin i'm in i'm sharing with ore i'm in collection with right there was this there was this coming together they were together and it's amazing how you know it's interlinked it's the same word um that is used to express also the holy spirit spirit because that's how we are to walk with the holy spirit in association in community in communion in joint participation in intimacy with the holy spirit to share this there's this exchange there is this coming together right so they came together right and even when you go to verses 46 to 47, it says, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved those who were being saved and i've highlighted these like key things um for us and even underlined one of them one accord in the temple house to house added to the church daily being saved right so they not only um there wasn't only a conversion you know um salvation that was taking place no like in order for them to flourish in order for them to grow like in terms of their spiritual growth they continue daily in one accord in the temple going from house to house now you know like i don't know in this in this day and age whether you know people can hack going house to house or you know being together all the time at this point but back then that was the way of life right because um because there was this this intimacy that then fed into their spiritual growth right um and then it says added and the lord added to the church daily those who were being saved and so which was when I was reading this, it really opened my eyes that the growth of the church, and when I'm talking about growth of the church, I'm not talking about we have thousands and thousands of people in the church and, you know, we just have people filling the seats. No, no, no. Like the growth of it was this, the salvation, the conversion, people that would then also join in, in that fellowship, right? In that community, in that conversation that they were having, you know, day to day, day daily salvation was a result of their fellowship so their fellowship also caused salvation for others and I think like that is so powerful like when we really look at that that is powerful like the growth of the church came from community like being with one another breaking bread I think that that's powerful if everyone's with me and understands what I'm saying put power in the chat I think that's powerful that on the premise of you and I, us guys, imagine we're downstairs in, 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 in the, in the art gallery, we're downstairs. And based on the fact that we all fellowship together, you know, imagine us being there day, day to day, coming together, worshiping, breaking bread, cracking joke, you know, I'm like, tell you and pass me like the barbecue for the fries or, you know, to shout out the vegans but like you know imagine that and based on what other people are witnessing there is an adding to the church daily based off of that fellowship I think it's powerful they were in gladness and simplicity of heart this is this is a beautiful picture right and so my question to you is where would you be spiritually if you were really engaged in church but also in meaningful fruit bearing spirit filled relationships not talking about maybe the friend that you know sometimes goes to church or sometimes reads the bible no like someone who is on fight like there is like fruit like you can see the fruit like they're spirit filled like where would you be spiritually as a result of that where would you be spiritually if you were engaged in in church right um consistently and we ain't even meeting daily y'all we meet Sundays, Sundays, just Sundays in our seasonal midweek, right? <laughs> but where would you be? Like, where would you, where would you be spiritually? 
And um, in one of the sessions a few weeks ago, I, I spoke about Psalms 1. You know, the blessed man, um, he doesn't, like, he's not in the counsel of the wicked. He's not in the counsel of those that, you know, are um, exercising, um, you know, terrible things that go against you know God like no like that's not he's in the word daily like he's in the word of God and also you know he's also probably in the midst of others you know that are sorry guys that are also doing the same thing um that he is doing and I think that speaks volumes it speaks volumes to how we should be how we should be positioned as disciples right I think it's really really important everyone everyone checking yeah and so I feel as though this is important because as well as your individual personal relationship with the Lord, I think there's something to be said about also the community being planted in a church, right? There's something to be said about that. And that does not look like, oh, I'm just signing my life away, but it does, there's something powerful about coming together and fellowshipping together. It says iron sharpens iron, right? Hebrews 10 verses 25, it says, not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching, the, some versions say the day of Christ approaching, right? Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. In some versions, I read a commentary the other day and it was saying that, you know, the writer of Hebrews was highlighting how, you know, there was already a practice of people beginning to forsake it. And that's why it had to be highlighted that they were forsaken it forsaken the assembling of you know believers of coming together and I think that there is such an encouragement and a blessing when we come together as one with one heart and one mind there is a refining there is a there it leaves room for accountability it leaves room for correction it leaves room you know for sharpening it leaves room for refining when we are with one another and we need that encouragement that that it provides us coming together. We need that encouragement. And I don't know like about you guys, but there have been moments, you know, where, you know, when before I enter into a church building, I'm feeling discouraged. Back in the day when I was feeling discouraged or I was feeling low, that, you know, the last place, I didn't want to be around people, but that was just my, um, my coping mechanism that I would withdraw and be by myself. But that's so anti, you know, what God desires for us. He desires us to be in community. But the times that I would push past that feeling of withdrawing myself or being alone and all of that and just kind of like forsaken all um the times that I would actually be like you know what today I'm gonna be courageous enough to go to church right despite how I'm feeling the encouragement and it was almost like the word was just for me the worship was just for me it was just for me and I think that's why we always encourage like if one is not serving in church still attend like it's not a day it's not it's not work you know what I mean like it's not a day off it's not annual leave no it's your time to be edified without the extra of like serving it's your opportunity to be poured into even that much more because you're not serving you know um and I think it's so so important because when we get into that place where it is optional and only when it's necessary or only when we're serving and all of that type of stuff what then happens is then that mindset that thought process of if I do this for God this, I will get x it comes into play it starts to take its root in us like oh God look at the way that I do this when like no that wasn't the first purpose of you attending you know you being with other believers right it was about the edification, the flourishing, the fruitfulness, and out of that place, also the, the, the serving that comes from it. Does that make sense, everyone? Right? And so church 
being together, it, it, it's, it's a blessing. It's a gift from God that we get to come together. Amen. I want to hear some voices in the room. Tatenda, let me go to Tatenda because Tatenda was the last person that wrote. Um, Tatenda, what's your thoughts on this? Um, hey, Ma. Hey, everyone. Um, I think, yeah, completely agree. I think I really like what you said right at the end, that church is a blessing. And I think, um, like, many times when you think that you're down, like, or even in the Bible, you see many times, like, not only did God send his provision and intercession in so many ways and through so many angels, he also sent it through a lot of people. Um, and so I think where it says to not forsake the gathering of the brethren and where Paul talks about, like, how all these gifts edify the church, like, there is so much in that. Um, mm -hmm. I think the only thing that I think would like open people's eyes a lot more to that is maybe the language that we use. And so like the conflation of the church with assembly and fellowship mm -hmm. and like if people know that we are the church, actually mm -hmm. when we gather um, and having that day of gathering is so important because it fits into your routine and it's a time you leave sacred mm -hmm. and you can honor a Sabbath and all of these other things. But mm -hmm. I think also just people understanding that like the whole thing of church is not a building it comes from we are the church and so the part we're called to isn't entering the building we're called to fellowship and assembly and sharing mm -hmm. and serving each other so that's like listening to what you're saying I think it just echoed that to me that like I think the language that we use and maybe the translations into English confuse maybe what we're expecting church to be mm -hmm. as opposed to what the blessing God has given us is which is spending time with each other mm -hmm. and edifying each other and letting the Holy Spirit work through us to each other. Mm -hmm. Oof, yeah, to tender. Oof, oof. Oh, you just preached the whole word. No, no, no. It's so, so true. So, so true. And that's why, you know, no, like, kind of shameless plug, but it isn't a shameless plug. Like, that's why we do things like, you know, our um, Sunday fun day, right? Like, our fun day on Sunday, like, is something, it's, it's still fellowship, it's still us coming together, it's still edifying one another, that's why we, like, over food, we talk, like, we have, we're having these tap groups, because it goes beyond us, right, it goes, like, and we're inviting other people, it's not us and them, okay, like, I can only imagine, like, let me go back to the scripture. Let me just, let me just backtrack a little bit. Um, I can only imagine how attractive it was, like they ate their food and gladness and simplicity, like how attractive that was for people outside, right? That maybe not, had not been converted, but it, it raises a curiosity, like what joy is this? What love is this? And last, last week we spoke about how love, is an exp is um how we love one another is also evidence of god right to on the earth is evidence of who he is how we love one another how we serve one another and so imagine that do you understand what i'm saying that's a greater that's even a, a greater way um to reveal who god is through our fellowship do you understand what I'm saying? And so I love that you said that, that it goes beyond it just being in a church building and, you know, kind of like, no way, no, but wherever we are, you know, we, it's, it's the fellowship. It's the fellowship of it to tender, nominate someone. Oh, I'm not going to pick. Um, I pick Shola. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, hey everyone. <laughs> I've had a feeling you picked me to tender. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree. Like, I think to tender, you said most of it really. Mm. Um, from my experience, I was even going to say what you pointed out, Pastor Susan, just how that's why it's so important. And I like how we have the different things where we recognize that we're not just a building, we really, um, cultivate that community aspect with the fun days with the um tap groups yeah with the women's things that we do things like that so we can really just sew into one another really build up one another mm. um but yeah and even I feel like what resonates with, with me as well I think the point was like even when you don't feel like it I mm. feel that that's the time when a devil would try to or like your emotions sure. can kind of consume you where you're like, oh no, I don't want to go to church today. I don't want anyone to see me like this. Or do you know what I mean? That can really um, 
books that can keep us away from church mm. um when really that's even more so that we should actually go to church because it's not about yes more so about the fellowship of things and actually you never know what someone can have within them mm. to really give to you even when especially when you feel like separated from the lord i feel like um, this has even happened to me before like mm. you never know what um words someone may have to you don't someone that you're not even um, even close to per se or yeah how god really ha- and it's just going back to the serving one another and mm. um just allowing the holy spirit to flow through that like not forsaking the gathering of the saints is so so important mm. um allowing yeah the spirit to flow through healing through transformation mm. so much happens when we're together so mm. yeah that's what i would say I love that so so good so good Shola love it I love it and yeah I love it as well like I I feel as though um you know you guys know our you know our church her experience as well um but even before like when I first when in the early years of when I first got saved um I really um battled with um suicidal thoughts and depression even after I'd given my life to Christ and I remember one particular time where I was laying in the dark I was supposed to be at choir practice and I was laying in the dark um depressed like I was supposed to go but I didn't I didn't want to be I didn't want to be there that's the rule you know I don't even have no I was depressed you know um and just contemplating my life and I remember one of my friends um she called me and she said oh where are you I thought that you would be here at um choir practice and I was like no I'm not coming like like yeah I'm not coming like this is where I'm at and she was like like are you going through um are you really going through this are you in a dark place and I was like yeah and she was like okay can you please still come like she literally begged me like please still come like please still come I know it's choir practice but please still come please still come and so I got on a bus you know I was like okay eventually I was just like with much weariness she convinced me to come um and I remember getting on the bus and I was just crying and whatnot and I got there and when I got there a lot of it was I lived by myself and I didn't have that much money as well and like the there was just a whole lot going on and um I got there and she was like um you know can I like can me and someone else pray for you and when I say they prayed over me like I I came there to come and do choir well I thought I was coming there to do choir practice or just to be there for the sake of being there but she prayed over me and um when I tell you whatever was on me on that day like literally broke off not only that um uh, you know afterwards we fellowshiped you know cracking joke we were doing whatever and then after she was like can we go to um Tesco and um Iceland real quick I want to do your shopping for you and when I tell you like that this she spent probably a hundred and something pounds just she was like whatever you need like let's do it and that's what it's about guys like that day like it was one step into the right direction, into, you know, changing even that, that was God's big hug for me. I can tell you many stories where it feels like it's God's big hug, right? But that was God's way of saying, no, I got you. You can experience me, but you can't experience me alone. You can't experience me in my fullness. I can meet you where you are, but you can't experience the fullness of who I am, you know, in isolation, in you choosing when and how, and it's just a, no, 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 you need to try me, like try my people, right? Try the people that that I'm, I'm, I've placed as an expression of who I am. And I say that to say this, that, you know, it's not about, you know, where you're at or whether it, it like, just take it from me, right? Through my testimony, I can tell you many stories, like I said, but it like, it's in those moments that God reveals the, the power of who he is in the midst of community. And it was, it was in community, like, and I didn't have community. Remember guys, orphan, been through foster, all of that type of stuff, right? Like 
And now I'm, I'm scared of being in community. I don't even like the idea of it, right? But my, like God will heal you in the very place that broke you. And it's the same after I had church hurt. Like the very place that I was broken in is the very place I was healed in. But I had to give God um, the opportunity to reveal himself through the people he has placed in my life and I feel as though I feel this so strong for someone right maybe your greatest your the greatest experience of even deliverance of or, and and the power of his love what it, it may come from community no it will come from community countless times right we can all testify when we chose to come something shifted and it may not be someone buying you shopping it may it, it may be a hug right when you come through those doors it may be someone's smile and you feel like you're seen but it's and it's we're all responsible for that it's not just me and PA we're all we we are part of an expression within the wider body right but we're all part of being an expression of his love, but it all starts with our encounter with him and allowing him to speak into us, allowing him to affirm our identities, right? And one thing that community does, it challenges selfishness. It challenges self. What she did was very selfless. She was a student herself, right? What she did was selfless right? And God honored that seed that she put into me and imparted into me, but it challenges selfishness. It, 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 it opens us up to see just how selfish we are, just how much we make things about us. And it shows how much we have a love deficit and how much we need that outpouring of his love so that we can pour it into other people. Because you don't know, your love might be the very thing that helps someone in their moment of depression. Your generosity might be the one thing that helps someone and shifts someone's perspective on who God is. Your ability to serve and to show up and to do it excellently and consistently might be the very thing that shows someone a revelation that God is committed to them and that they can try him. It could be the very thing that stops someone from even considering suicide. Like it's, it's deep guys, it's deep. And so when, when, when Jesus is speaking about hands and feet, right? Shout out hands and feet ministry. This is what it's about in our space as a community, but also, um, you know, out there as well in, 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 in the area that we're in or in the places that we are in right but I want to hear back from you guys before we have a little bit of a um yes Shola yeah I think just me quickly I think even just like thinking about it practically like I genuinely feel like some of the I don't put it, like, like like some of what I feel like could be the best relationships have come from like a and um like even playing, like I'll hear a cackling opinion on the phone every morning with me with somebody. I'm like, bro, like, like <laughs> shout out. Shout out. Uh, anyway, um, but, but but yeah, like I feel like it's genuinely been like a place where I've developed such like meaningful and good relationships. Like everybody on this call, like I like I will be more than happy to um go out with, get to know. But like it's just been like a blessing. Mm. Um, I think sometimes it, it, it's it's like church friends. It's like. Oh, you have to kind of force it and it's like oh, like I have to go out with you I have to see my tap group I have to do this but mm. I genuinely feel like there's a there's even like a desire just because like I actually really like like everybody right and that's just being honest right I feel like sometimes you think you can be in a place where it's like oh, I have to be here right um but yeah even yeah like so yeah no it's definitely been a massive blessing for me like and I've seen that um firsthand so I think that's like my own experience uh, mm. church. I love that. Thank you, Damola. Really appreciate that. And I love that you like everyone here. That's the... may you continue, Sha. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to share? Can I go? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think this whole session feels very close to home because at one point prior to joining um ANT, 
it was like a prayer like I knew that I had a desire for community mm. and at one point it kind of felt like I would even like pray like Lord I'm not a beg but Lord I need friends like <laughs> I need more friends I knew that there was a desire for mm. like my heart wasn't full if that made sense mm. I mean it was years I think I prayed about it from probably like 2018 wow. up until we joined um Daman and I joined um A&T and I think I want to speak more so to the desire like mm-hmm. I didn't I would ask God like is this a is this a heavenly desire is this a a Christian desire like Lord why do I feel this need for people mm-hmm. and I couldn't put my finger on it there were times I would cry about it I'd pray about it um and it's obviously a blessing now that I'm sitting in an answered prayer I am within an answer prayer as a and mm. but I just think for some people they have a desire for people and to love people and to be present for people um and to fellowship which is ultimately what the desire is and I think I don't know if this is feedback or not but no no go I on. think if that's something that is a desire that you have take it from someone that prayed about it for three years prior to the prayer or yeah prior to the prayer being answered it's something God wants for us mm. like all of us are created to love and be loved Mm. um there's a need or there's a reason why you would have a desire to be around other people and to speak to other people and every Sunday God reminds me of the need for it because Mm. there's times I don't want to come to church especially in the last year Mm. and even when I do come to church I feel full I feel seen Mm. um I feel covered Mm. um and I think that only happens when you are in fellowship with people that are like-minded mm. um I think I rambled but yeah you, didn't. Just, you yeah. didn't at all um it's very powerful what you're saying and I think that I love that you said that it was something that you know you really prayed for and it was a desire you know even questioning it and you know it, you kind of highlighted it but yeah like if God has a does a deep desire for fellowship with us like he went to great lengths so that we can be with fellowship within him, then it's, I feel like it's a desire that he would honor in us. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, like he would honor that. If that is a deep desire of God's to be in fellowship with us intensely, then why not? Can we not have that, you know what I mean? With the right people, um, which is key to highlight. But yeah, so I love what you're saying. Like, it's beautiful. Um, Bim have your hand up yeah I just wanted to add um I agree with what everyone has said so far Mm. and as you were talking P.S. it just reminded me of um there was a this was before I joined NT but I saw it on Instagram preaching that pastor Lisa did at some point and she was talking about that there's an area of healing that's reserved for your community Mm. and she was using the scripture in um John 11, where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead Mm. Um, and Jesus performed the miracle. He raised him from the dead, from the dead. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Mm. And then he told them. So Mm. Lazarus's community, his sisters, those that were around him to take off the grave clothes and let him go. Mm. And I just found that so profound that Mm. why wasn't it Jesus himself that went to take off the grave clothes? He told the people around Lazarus, Lazarus to do it so I think even in that miracle Jesus modeled for us the power of community that yes there are some things that God will do and Jesus will do in our lives but there are some things specifically reserved for those around us for our community for those that we love and trust and we value Mm -hmm. Um, and it just speaks to the power of you know gathering together Mm -hmm. you know it also it's a sense of belonging that you have a tribe you you belong somewhere you know you're not neglected you're not abandoned you're not forgotten like you belong here Mm. and you're seen like Toyin was saying you're seen each and every Sunday even like every day you're seen because you're part of this community so Mm. yeah I just I find that so powerful that there's a reason that we gather um, and there's a purpose for us gathering that's so good so so good like (laughs) I don't even know what emoji shall we put fire emoji in the chat that Mm -hmm. that is so so powerful there is yeah like what there's a there's healing reserved in community say that quote again so that we can catch it um there's hey let me try to remember (laughs) (laughs) there's a specific area of healing reserved 
for your community. Yes, love that. Yeah. So powerful. And I feel as though that's powerful because it then kind of like um, challenges challenges us to really practice vulnerability. Um, And one of the prayers that I would pray um, is, Lord, give me the courage to be vulnerable because vulnerability is not something that is easy to be exercised, right? So God, like, give me discernment to identify who to be vulnerable with. Let me look at their fruit. Let me see if they're worthy of this vulnerability. But when those things have been checked off on the list, Lord, give me, give me the courage to actually be vulnerable so that I can experience that. And I don't know about you guys, but there's been moments where like I've been vulnerable about something and then they speak a specific word that was necessary for that that kind of answers a prayer and and so there's just or just the love of the conversation but you know there's something so beautiful about um vulnerability in the right spaces in safe spaces and so I really want to encourage us all you know really encourage us to say that prayer and really give room um for vulnerability like you know what and even before god like god actually yeah i need more people that are like-minded in my world you know um i i i i do need you know that iron and sharpened iron i do need that brotherly love i do i'm always the strong one i'm always the one pouring out but you know what god i i i if i'm if i'm going to be honest to lord like actually I need to be in spaces where I can be weak and be sharpened at the same time right there's a mutual exchange to tender said deep in it we the church are the bride of Christ and Jesus my guy who can die and wake up won't just marry anyone so imagine the gift that we get to experience the treasure of God treasure in earthen vessels healing here makes sense exactly healing makes sense in the midst of community anyone else want to add on before um we move on. Ooh, I feel like this is such a nice way to close like season one, right? Like about community and fellowship. I think this is beautiful. Um, and I really feel as though um, as we continue to grow and continue to pattern our lives after Christ, we will, um, we will, um, continue to really experience him in unique ways in the context especially in community if we let him right um won't he do it if we let him that's usually what it is and I really want to just say that like in order for us to really grow in our dis as disciples for us to grow as disciples right and to really honor the things that God has commanded of us instructed of us called us into I believe that it really requires us to really grow in the fear of the Lord and when we speak about the fear of the Lord we're talking about the proper application of knowledge right it's the proper application of knowledge fear of the Lord is not fear as in oh I'm timid no like it's a reverence for the Lord. It's something that only the spirit can cultivate in us. It's not something that we can do in and within ourselves. It's something that the spirit does that. And that, that fear of the Lord determines how you and I live in secret and not just in public, right? Like there's certain things as a disciple, because I have the fear of the Lord, because I'm someone who's yielded to his lordship like there there's certain things that I would choose not to do even when I'm in when I'm in private and so when you have the fear of the Lord you don't need external motivation when you have the fear of the Lord no one no one has to tell you to read your word or no one has to tell you to obey the Lord when it comes to some of the things he's instructed you to do no one needs to motivate you or push you into um submission or any of that type of stuff like when it comes to the Lord no like there's the spirit is because of your close connection with him that fellowship remember kanonia the word, the Greek word for Holy Spirit, which is fellowship, because I have that, that fellowship with the spirit, you know, and he's cultivating this fear 
of the of of the lord you know i can i can truly walk in that which he has said right i can really experience the love of god and demonstrate that love also and i can really be in fellowship amongst other believers because i have the fear of the lord also about how he honors his church i can serve well and excellently because I have the fear of the Lord, not because, you know, I might, you know, not do this or, you know, someone might look at me funny because I'm late. No, 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 no. Like I have the fear of the Lord. So I honor the time he's given to me and what he's called me to do. And so this is a really, really, I feel like it's important for us to round up on this point of the fear of the Lord, um, because um, it's, it's going to be it's going to be the very thing that keeps us as disciples. Amen. And so really quickly, I just want us to break out really quickly. This is a quick time to just pray and talk, but what areas of your discipleship do you need to develop, right? What areas of your discipleship do you need to develop? And as a group, I want you to pray into those areas together and ask that the Lord will give each of you and just screenshot it so you guys don't lose it, that the Lord will give each of you the grace to develop those areas and bear much fruit and that you may increase in the fear of the Lord. So I'm going to put you in breakout groups really quickly. I'm going to pause it. I forgot to repeat it. Season one is a wrap of... Um, the um where are we where are we midweek sessions um I really do pray that it was a blessing for you all um and like I said I encourage you to go back and to replay and to watch and to really pray into these areas I think us growing as disciples is such a key thing um and an important thing and like I said especially the the revelation of your identity in Christ as a son is so so important in this season so keep going into that and just as you've prayed with one another I want to challenge you over the next week um to keep praying for each other from your groups just keep praying into each other and if you feel led send a scripture, send an encouragement, send a I'm thinking of you. It goes a long way, right? You don't know what you're releasing through um, doing that. And so I'm going to just wrap it up and pray guys, leave me a, hat, a heart in the chat. Love you guys so much. Um, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity that we have had to come together and fellowship in this way. And Lord, I just pray even um, regarding, you know, some of the things that we have learned over the last few weeks, we ask that you may give us the grace to pattern our lives um, according to your word, according to your example, Jesus. I just ask and I pray, oh Lord, that you will really give us the grace um, to really lean into the love that you have for us. We receive that we are deeply loved and known by you today, God. Lord, I just pray, oh God, that, you know, you will strengthen the bond and the fellowship that we have. Lord, I just really pray, oh God, that we will bear the evidence of your spirit working in us, God. Give us the grace to pray. Give us the grace to read your word, oh God. Lord, give us the grace to humble ourselves. Your word says that when we humble ourselves, that there is grace found there. So God, give us, Lord God, the strength and the courage um, to humble ourselves, to have a healthy estimation of ourselves holy spirit i just really pray may you just impart a revelation of the of your fatherhood towards us of your heart towards us of your of of your of your um of your mind towards us lord god lord i pray may you bring peace and really overtake every form of overwhelm and anxiety and distrust oh god heavenly father i pray even as we've spoken about today about community give us the grace to be committed 
Lord God, to one another as a body, but also, you know, that which you are doing, you know, in this expression that is part of the body, A-N-T, God, help us and give us the grace. And above all, Lord, may we grow in the fear of the Lord. May you cultivate that and nurture that. May we grow in the fear of the Lord when it comes to how we steward our finances, how we are in our relationships and marriage and how we are, Lord God, in different areas and different spaces. May we grow in the fear of the Lord and how we serve your house, oh God, and how we live our lives. Holy Spirit, just continue to pour out your love upon our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah, pour out your spirit, Lord enrich us lord enrich us lord enrich us lord in jesus name we pray amen and amen amen everyone amen. thank you so much um for being part of today's session and season one, some of you guys have been consistent from the beginning. And so I, w I really appreciate you guys taking the time out. God bless you guys. Love, grace, and peace. Love you. We'll see you Sunday.